I'm Laurel Burleson. My business is called The Ugly Apple. It's a cafe. We do catering. I started as a food cart. Um, and for the Cooking with Cap Times, we're going to make punchki, which is a traditional Polish treat for Mardi Gras, but it's something that I've been developing over the last several years, and it's really special. We're going to do a sweet and savory one. Oh, that's fantastic. Are you Polish? I am Polish. Okay, so for our Leopold's pairing, I'm MJ Hickox here at Leopold's, where we pair bottles and books, and so for this month's pairing with Laura's dish, uh, we selected a pet knot from American Winery Project. Uh, they are a local winery here in Wisconsin that specializes in regional grapes um, and produces natural wines. So this pet knot is really big and expressive in terms of notes if you compare it to other bubblies because it rests on the yeast for quite some time and then it's left unfiltered. The um, sort of brioche and apple orchard notes probably pair pretty well with your dish. Um, and then the bubbles and the fresh acidity should cleanse the palate and leave you wanting another bite, whether it's sweet or savory. Uh, this particular wine, there were only 100 cases made, so Whoa. we're lucky to pop this bottle. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh. Cheers. Cheers. Hello and welcome to Cooking with the Cap Times. My name is Beck, I'm with the Cap Times and we're excited to welcome you to tonight's installation. Our chef tonight is Laurel Burleson of Ugly Apple Cafe and she is gonna be teaching us how to make punchki. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm excited for some sweet, some savory versions of this filled Polish donut. It's gonna be delicious. Our guests here are already getting to enjoy a little bit of the wine pairing, as well as some additional donuts that Laurel brought for them to enjoy. So that plug is that if you want to be here in person to enjoy that yourself next time, you should become a Cap Times member. <laughs> That's what all these people here are. That's how you get to enjoy this live in-person event. And so to do that, all you have to do is give any amount at membership.captimes.com, and then you're in. You have a chance to come to our next taping of one of these. It's a good time. Uh, before we get started, I did want to thank our sponsors for the series. So our official kitchen sponsor is Kesnick's. That's where we are now. They have everything you need to supply your kitchen with all the tools to be the best home chef you can be. Everything is here. You got to come here. And we really appreciate them letting us use this wonderful space to put on this series. Our wine pairing sponsor is Leopold's Book Bar Cafe. You just saw a little intro from them. We are so grateful to them, to their sommelier, MJ, picking out a wine every month to pair specifically with this month's dish. And you, you can get the wine by stopping in there anytime. And you can also just get coffee, cocktails, books, bottles of wine paired with books. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> you have to check it out. <laughs> also want to thank our video partners, Hinkley, for making this possible. They're the ones filming this. We appreciate them. And, uh, oh yes, you should ask questions throughout this. If you have any questions for the chef or for Lindsay about any details about this recipe or techniques, we'll get those answered for you. And the person with the best question at the end of the night will win a bottle of the wine that you just saw showed off. So let those questions come rolling in. You might be the lucky winner. On that note, I will turn it over to our food editor, Lindsay Christians, and Chef Laurel. Yay, thank you, Beck. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you all for coming and being here. Um, first of all, Laurel, I'm hoping you can introduce yourself a little bit for these folks. Sure. So tell us a little bit about Ugly Apple Cafe. Sure, yeah. Well, hi, I'm Laurel Burleson. I started the Ugly Apple Cafe going on seven years ago now um, as a food cart serving breakfast downtown but always with the mission of using seconds and overstock from local farmers as much as possible. So before I opened the business, I'd go around to the farmers and be like, hi, do you sell your seconds? What happens to them? And kind of from that response, like enough people are kind of like, yeah, I'd sell them, you know, just kind of <laughs> in that range where it was like, okay, this might be viable, this might work. And um, when I started, I would bake with them, winter squash became muffins or frittatas or mm. another kind of breakfast special. And we kind of evolved from there. I started doing catering. 
uh, because I named the business Ugly Apple, orchards kept reaching out to me. Like, <laughs> Ugly Apples? You buy Ugly Apples? I have Ugly Apples. <laughs> I will sell them to you. Please come. And and so then I developed kind of a line of Apple products with apples Yeah. because of the name. But that wasn't really where we started. I worked in reverse. So I make fruit leather. I make jam. The fruit leather is so I good. Donuts. Thank you. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And it's a great product because I feel like I can really maximize mm -hmm. by just tons and tons of apples. And it's a dehydrated product that I kind of pack in single servings. So like, I feel like people think of fruit leather, like mm -hmm. fruit roll ups for kids, but it's really like a great snack for anybody. No sugar added, even the cranberry ones, no sugar. And so that's cool product. I remember when you got your new dehydrator and it looked like a oh, rocket yeah. that could like take you to the moon. It's yeah. just this huge thing that like kind of beeps menacingly. I'm like, this is great. This For is cool sure. thing. <laughs> I have another uh, kind of a surprise at the end. We have like another equipment fun gadget. Ooh, extra. okay. Nice. Stay tuned. That's really fun. Yeah. So you brought a little bit of extra treats here. Yeah. And those are from Ugly Apple, right? They are indeed. So we opened. So that was the beginning of the story. And then about a year and a half ago, um, I teamed up with Tyson Fauché. He's here. He's my lovely Hi, assistant Tyson. this evening. Um, <laughs> um, from I won't give you his whole resume. It's way too long. But he was at Madison Sourdough for a long time and okay. became like a bread expert. So um, we've kind of upped the baking game. And we were looking for a spot to open our cafe. Uh, one other thing I do is apple cider donuts at Orchards in the fall. So I bought a donut. It's called a donut robot. I swear, that is the name of this thing. It is a deep fryer, but it's long, a conveyor fryer specifically for donuts. So um, we, I bought it before I had a place to put it, and then we were looking for a spot and found out that the cafe space in the Dane County Courthouse became available at the mm -hmm. end of the summer. And I submitted all my plans and paperwork and got approved by the county in September, and we opened in November, and it's been going great. We've been super busy. So that's where these donuts came from and cookies. We bake uh, focaccia and our own burger buns. We're open for breakfast and lunch, Monday through Friday. And again, like up until now, mainly just for the people working in the courthouse and who have to be there for court or for jury duty or anything like that. There's the law library right there. Um, and we've been super busy with that. But this is kind of our launch of like, hey, other people can come. You just have to go through security. But the security guards are some of our best customers, and they're amazing people. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Yeah, it's my um, pleasure. So, why did you choose Punchki? Like, why are we why are we doing Punchki today? Well, when you reached out to me to coordinate this, it was a little before Mardi Gras, so it, it was, was kind yes. of top of mind. Punchki are a Polish delicacy for Mardi Gras. So you eat this delicious treat that uses all the dairy, all the butter and eggs. It's like a super rich dough <laughs> with super, it's not just a jelly donut. The real ones have more of like a jam or a custard. They're like rich treats. Um, we've been playing around. We brought one that's savory this year. I, I hadn't heard of it before, but we're like, why not? Seems like a good idea. Um, <laughs> And uh, so it was top of mind, but also it's, it's part of like how I grew up. Uh, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago where there's a larger Polish population. My mom is Polish mm -hmm. and she would always buy us punchki. Um, she is not a baker. Um, so, so I grew up with it and then moving to Madison realized that it gets, it's not quite the same thing. Like it was such a thing when I was growing mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. um, that I was like, man, I need to start doing these. And like played around a little bit with it at home and then like when I started the business it was like okay this is maybe something people want and kind of grew and grew and grew and grew and every year we kind of tweak it a little bit and like this year they're like they're it's, it's a little bit insane how good they are <laughs> Yay! Like, <laughs> I love that yeah, yeah yeah so I was like okay these are like really really special we need to we need to share these with more people more than maybe just once a year Nice. Maybe. I love, no, I love this. Maybe. This is good. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's still some like misconceptions about what punchki are, or like people hear it and they're like, oh, what is that? So I think it's going to be a wonderful thing to demo. But also I think a lot of us don't make donuts at home. Right. And it's not like it's, it's not like difficult, difficult, but there are like a lot of steps. And so I think, you know, let's just get right into yeah. it and like get prepping. And I think you'll get a lot of questions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, so with this, time is your friend. It's a yeasted dough. It takes time, um, which again, like one hour class, not something we have tonight. So we magic the televisioned a lot of it. Um, <laughs> we, I have, we have dough that we did yesterday that you guys are going to taste. Sorry, guys at home, you are not tasting these. Um, make your own. 
make them. Um, <laughs> and then I, we started dough earlier that we're going to see the end kind of roll out, and then I'm going to start a batch of dough. So you'll see like the beginning, the middle, and the end, and then the ones to taste. Um, but one thing we learned about this year, too, is that they are better if you can make them the night before, ah. cut them out, put them in the refrigerator, get up in the morning, let them come up to room temperature, fry them off, delicious. And then you're starting your day with donuts. And same thing with the fillings. It's a lot to cram into this class. We got kind of ambitious. Hopefully, we'll get through everything. But you can, you can make apple filling ahead. You can make custard ahead, you know, and set it. And so you can make the bacon filling anytime. You don't breakfast, lunch, it's like a pizza bagel, just whenever you want it. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so time is your friend with All right. this process. Cool, so where are we starting? Said, let's yeah. go. I think we're gonna start with the dough Sweet. so that we okay. can see it, it after our first round. Okay, so um, also a thing being your friend is everything at room temperature. Um, we have some warm milk. That's the only thing that's warm because we're mixing yeast into it. Um, so that's where I usually start. Um, just into a bowl. And then I just do like a little bit. Yeah, I think it says in the recipe like a tablespoon or two of sugar. I just give it like kind of a zhuzh. Um, just a sprinkle. It's just, I mean, there's like milk sugar. Milk has sugar and that should be enough for the yeast. I just give it an extra little because I think the yeast appreciates it. I don't know how much. I haven't gotten feedback from yeast to see how much they actually care, <laughs> but that's my impression. Um, and then I like doing kind of like a cyclone and swirling it in because um, I feel like Surface area is your friend with yeast too. If it kind of clumps up, it's harder to like all break down, but if you can kind of get a layer in your bowl, I don't know if we can see on the camera, I'm sorry, I had it on the wrong side of the mixer, people at home, I'm sorry. So, but I tried to get like, it kind of spread the yeast out. And so if you make like a cyclone and then pour your yeast, it tends to just centrifugal force out. I'm, I'm gonna try to use science words too during this and hopefully I get some of them right. <laughs> I'm immediately thinking that there's probably a way to do this with sourdough starter. Yeah. <laughs> there very well could be. So when when we end up with our finished product, like because it's like a couple day fermenting, mm -hmm. like it, I feel like it's reminiscent of that mm -hmm. for the sourdough fans. Okay, so this guy sits and starts to activate. Would you mind passing me a spatula? Mm. Yeah, are these all spatulas? Yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A giant bowl of spatulas. Like Some spatula people have bouquet. flowers. <laughs> Lauren has spatulas and flowers. All of the spatulas. All right. Room temperature butter, softened butter. Same thing with the eggs. Everything goes together better when it is softer. I tried softening butter in the window because I was like, it's sunny in the window. Oh. No, it's very cold in the window. Oh, yeah, fair I enough. Felt very silly. Um, so butter and sugar, and that's why too, I feel like as much as these are donuts, there's almost like, there's elements of making cookies to it because it's like you're creaming together butter and sugar like you would start a chocolate chip cookie. And hopefully this mixer likes to go fast. Faster than slower, so we'll see how we do there. Uh, while that's happening, I'm gonna separate some eggs. I feel like that's something that might intimidate people also. I'm not sure. I feel like I, Sometimes when I get new staff, they're intimidated by separating eggs. Um, so we need three yolks and a white. First of all, I like to crack eggs on like a flat surface, like a harder counter. And then I like to do the, the shell method. This is how my mother does it too. You can use a slotted spoon or they make oh. like silly uh, tools like tool that do it for it? you. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, if this is yeah. how we did it as kids, like little. Oh, with your doing, hands, yeah. 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 I feel like this is slightly neater. You still get some egg on your hands. Yeah, the shell method, we did the shell yeah. method. Yeah. I'm gonna just give this a little scrapey scrape. Um, it, it doesn't is, need to mix super long. We're just kind of, you know, like fluffy, like how you make cookies. It's like it could go like toward a cookie right now. Like it could go right, in exactly. a cookie direction if exactly. we wanted. Exactly, yeah, that's why like in describing these, it's like, so it's a donut. It's like, well, yes, but it's also, it's more like a, I, like a brioche than like a donut donut. All right, we'll get our last. Also, I like to do the yolks first, even though you do need a whole egg, because in case the white is just sticking for some reason, you can just choose to use it. Eggs are also room temp. They are. The eggs are room temperature. It makes them easier to separate. If they're cold, um, oh. they're a little bit harder to separate. And then when they mix in with our butter, they're going to go together easier if they're not cold into room temperature butter. The butter won't 
won't like it too much if it's uh, if it's too cold. Um, okay, great. So this, you know, light and creamy. You guys can kind of see on the on the whip here. Um, again, you don't have to go crazy with it. Um, and then scrape, 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 scrape. That's one thing um, with stand mixers versus handheld mixers. I used to do this with just a handheld um, mixer. Oh, yeah, that was a question that I had because you just said mixed together, and I was like, handheld stand yes. mixer, and you said, well, either one. Yeah, really. Well, so the benefit of the hand mixers in just a normal bowl is I feel like you can get a better sense of what's sticking to the bottom um, versus this has the little, like, dimple, the, the dent in the bottom to to force things to be mixed better in theory, but I feel like sometimes they just stick. <laughs> so you have to really get in there. All right, and then we're adding, I might also need to refer to my recipe at some point. I oh, think I'm sure. good for now. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with baking versus cooking. I feel like cooking, well, we have an analogy that like Tyson and I were actually talking through that um, cooking is kind of like going to a rock concert. Where it's like you, you want to hear the greatest hits. Like if you go to a restaurant, you like want you want the thing, you want the 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 hit song. But but if it's a little different, it's like oh that's cool. Or like well they tried something else, like neat. And baking is more like a symphony. It's like you go because you you want it. You want to hear the thing that honors the thing that is the best and how it was supposed to be. And that's like the bread baking that that Tyson does with the focaccia. The focaccias and things that we make, it's like you want it to be the best example of the thing that it is. Mm -hmm. and it's like, all right. And like, I feel like um, a lot of the baking I do, like quick bread baking and breakfast baking, is kind of like jazz. Yeah. Where you can like mix it in a little, you could like, you have, you have to know the form and stay within it, but um, you're, you're allowed to play a little bit more than with bread. And it's like, yeah, it's still, you know, it'll work out. Did you have a question? Yes, I assume that cafe you've got just a ton of uses for the leftover whites. I have some. Well, so question I question about using the egg oh, whites. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so I have three extra egg whites here. Um, I mean, because I make frittatas and and things like that all the time, it's really easy for me to incorporate in with with other eggs. Um, there are some cookies that use more whites than yolks. Um, of course, I'm not. Like meringue kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I want to say there's like a coconutty cookie too that uses more whites. Do macarons have um, white? Oh, like straight. Yeah, the French macaron. I think yeah, yeah, are yeah. just maybe just whites. Yeah, I think so. And, and like almond. almond flour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and sugar. Um, um, yeah. So I I feel like I ended up with a lot of them and like didn't try too hard. We like just did like egg white stuff for a, a few days and like got them all. Um, chiffon cake, Ooh. angel food cake, um, and then like yeah, like meringue cookies. I had a little butter jump here. Um, all right, we'll keep keep the train a rolling. Um, yeah, that can be a little high. I feel like I I tend to let it go a little lower, but we can up the volume just to get there faster. It's not gonna hurt it. So you grated some nutmeg in there. I did, yeah. So it was nutmeg, salt, vanilla, um, and the eggs. If you have like already ground nutmeg, do you use that? And if not, why not? You can absolutely. Um, again, when I when I'm making like hundreds at a time, I uh, don't uh, yeah. bother grating it. I'm sorry. I feel like for for this amount, you can do like tch, 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 and you're done. Um, it's really it's kind of a dealer's choice. I feel like if you don't use nutmeg very often. Um, and your ground nutmeg would sit for like a year. Maybe have some nuts and then grate them fresh. Um, it probably will give you a better product. If you are using a ton of nutmeg all the time, I feel like the ground, you'll probably go through the ground pretty quick. I used to also kind of hate nutmeg, um, but nutmeg is what donuts taste like. Um, and I, I found other uses for it, but that was a thing. When I started experimenting with donuts, I was like, oh no, you need a nutmeg. I don't know why. It's I used to thing. struggle like that with clove because I feel like clove mm. is like can be very aggressive. You know? Very Just aggressive. Very aggressive. Yeah. Um, and For nutmeg sure. I think can be a little bit that way too, where it doesn't always play well with others. Yes. You yeah. Know? It can be for sure. <laughs> All right. And then let me just make sure I didn't skip a step. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, so it's not it's not together. It's not like one thing. If you can kind of see, it's like mostly together, but it does look a little broken, and that's okay. 
it's not gonna be like one thing. Um, it doesn't mean that you you did something wrong. All right, and then we are going to add approximately half of our flour. Um, again, I kind of eyeball this. I'm gonna put that there because that is fine. Um, also, if, if people are not familiar with this tool, um, it's either called a dough card or a bench scraper. Uh, I feel like it probably has another name. Have you heard it? It's a, a bench scraper. I've heard like, yeah, dough cutter. Oh, dough cutter too, yes. Um, sure. uh, it's, it's so funny. I think every baker who comes on this show is like, oh my God, you need one of these. <laughs> Get one immediately. You need one. Um, I bought them for uh, my mom and some of my close friends for mm. Christmas one year as like part of their Christmas gift. And I was like, yeah. just trust me. Yes. You need this, and yes. I know that you don't have it because I've been in your kitchen. Right. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, for washing dishes, especially like stuck on egg pans, yeah. it does the best oh. job getting it off. Um, but also, yeah, for lots of stuff around the kitchen. So you're starting with flour, you're adding yep, your, had your the flour. Wet. Yep, I'm just going to start it. And this is where this mixer does not like to stir. Um, and then kind of adding the liquid here pretty quick. I think it said in the notes to let it incorporate, and this was another thing we kind of changed to like faster is adding the liquid earlier, like not trying to let the flour incorporate, just because then I feel like we were letting it incorporate, but then having to like smooth it out again, and uh, it just seemed unnecessary. And um, I feel like maybe the dough was a little bit more tender, and it comes together faster. So now it's like I will pull this up again. So we have like kind of a smooth, stretchy mm. guy. You can already smell the yeast, actually. Yeah. Like it's aromatic. You can smell it. Mm -hmm. We have another question. This person asks, they've heard that traditional punchki were actually formed around the filling and were cooked with filling already inside. Is that <gasps> correct? And would your recipe work to make them that way? Whoa. I was like, how do you even do that? I that had not heard that. Like, would you freeze it? Like, I think you'd have to. Right? Um, I don't. We have to test this out. <laughs> I feel like it's possible it with this dough. It'd have to be, yeah, the middle but would yeah, have the, to be the, solid right, somehow. Right, right, yeah, the middle would have to be solid. Like, you'd have to, like, scotch egg it, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it must be. That's fun. That is. That a great like question. That, yeah. <laughs> I, gosh, now I need to research that and try to figure that out. I, yeah, I had never, I had never heard that. That's, that's really cool. Thank you. Okay, so then again, this mixer, I feel like you if you have a, a mixer or if you're using a little one that can go slow to start with, you don't have to kind of tap it. The flower flying is giving me Giovanni Novella flashbacks of like when he was like, pasta! Oh my gosh. We were, it, was, it was really fun. All right. <laughs> and then that's it. We just kind of let it come together. I'm just going to move my little here. Actually, yeah. I don't need these whites. I don't need yeah. these whites. And I have a glass of wine for you in case you ever decide you want some. Hey. <laughs> I, I would like some wine <laughs> at some point. Yeah. Let's let's get a couple things under yes, our belt no, first. Course, we have course. a lot to do. All right, and then I'm a little bit fanatical about scraping things. I'm sorry. It's part of like the no waste. I feel like I get teased a little bit sometimes at work too. It's like, why did you throw that? We could save it. Let's save it. Save everything. It's the ugly apple one. Yeah, it is the ugly apple one. <laughs> it's like a little bit of a joke, but. You know, making stock with this, the vegetable ends, of course, and then just like whatever else. Like, oh, we could have reused that. We could do this. We could do this. Um, that's been the hard part, though, with the business is that I feel like ugly apple sometimes is like, wait, are you the you're the bad apple? Are you the rotten apple? Are oh, you the? No. And it's like, no, 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 no. The <laughs> apples are fine. They just don't look so nice, but they're great. They're they delicious. They taste delicious. Yes. Well, and this year was such a bumper apple crop. Um, yeah. It was insane. Everyone had so many apples. You know, it's funny. I, I noticed, like, we have a, a crab apple tree in the backyard with, like, the biggest crab apples you've ever seen. Like, this, they're almost apple apples. They're oh, huge. Nice. Huge. And it was so full. It was just insane. It was the, the fullest I've ever seen it. The poor tree, I thought, was going to, like, keel yes. over. Oh, no. And I was like, I, and the year before, we got hardly any. Yeah, well, so it, um, so very quickly, I'm just gonna pull this. So I put a, a good amount of flour on the board here. Yes, sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just scraping it out with my bench scraper. Um, you can also, though, use a spatula um, if, if that's what you have. This is just a little bit faster. And then, same thing, I'm just kind of folding it over a few times. 
And you've got floured hands that you're working yes, with. Yes, yeah. Floured my hands. And then here I'm going to kind of work with both tools to kind of, because you don't need it to be, it's going to be sticky still. So if you have your spatula, let me try to do that a little bit. You can still kind of use your spatula to kind of get under it with your hands. So you're not trying to work it so much that it like is not sticky. It's going to be sticky. But just kind of like make sure it's all come together. I think sometimes in the mixer it doesn't look super together. But it's like a really soft kind of sticky dough. And then I have a greased bowl already. So you just went shh on that grease bowl? Um, I put a little bit of canola oil in it, just maybe sure, uh, okay. a tablespoon, and then like mushed it with my hands around. Sounds good. The, the, the surface that you're putting this on, does it matter? Like if I have like a crappy kitchen counter, am I putting it on a cutting board? That's okay. Um, I mean, you can if you want to. You might have better luck kind of moving it around. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I do, we have stainless steel tables at the cafe, so that's what I work it on, which is not ideal, but gets the job done. Yeah. Um, did I have a little bowl over here? There we go. I think you did, yes. All right. Sorry. Let me see if I end up needing to actually wash my hands. I might have to, but uh, oh, we can go with it for now. Okay. We'll see. However you want to we'll do. We'll see. We're okay. As long as you guys don't mind. No, you're good. Great. All right, we'll scooch that out of the way. <laughs> and then I think we're going to talk about apples a little bit. Go back to apples. So these are from Dorky Gorchard? They are. They're nice. kind of the last ones of her season. I was going to say, like, these are keepers. <laughs> yes, yes. Which it is, is a, March now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great thing about apples that they do keep yeah. for a long time. And there's a couple different ways you can do them. Um, also, I mean, that being keepers, like, I brought extra because, like, there were a few when I was cutting into them earlier where it's like, oh, the middles are kind of maybe not what we want. Um, but uh, there's a couple different ways you can do them. If I'm doing apples at home, like for my kids for a snack or something, I cut them straight in half and then use a melon baller. I feel like this is the fastest, easiest way. If you just want like snack apple, you can pop the stem and the little flower bit and just clean out any of that um, kind of membrane-y stuff that's, that's like plastic. And then now you have like an apple for eating, like ready to go. So you can do that or for, was there a question? Sorry. No, oh, okay. Sorry. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. A spoon also, just a small spoon that works. Yeah. 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 It might depend on how sharp your spoon is on the edge, or like I've had measuring spoons that work too. Um, if you don't have a melon baller, I feel like they're handy to have around randomly. I never ball melons with them though. It's a strange name. Um, ball melons. Yeah. I guess. Right. I are mean, there, are there certain very kinds of apples that you would peel? Um, yeah, if it's like a, a like a thicker skin, so like late season apples, like right now, Ida Reds are sometimes still available, and that's like a thicker skin. And you so, would, would want to peel that then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and it kind of depends on your tolerance for apple skin. If you're like not really a fan, go ahead and peel it if you don't really care. Or like these ones have like a lot of flavor, so I like to keep it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of personal preference. And these are greenings, right? Yeah, great northern greenings. Great northern greenings. They this makes some of the best cider ever. Like greening cider. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, this one has kind of a rough middle too. But this is the other way you can kind of do it is like slice down one side, turn it, slice back. Oh. If you if your plan is to dice an apple, this is the way to to do it the most efficiently. That being said, you waste a little more because you keep more on the core, or you end up with bits like this, like I just did, where it like cuts in, and now you have to go back and clean that out. So, again, dealer's choice. Some people do things with apple cores. Um, if you are into making like um, pepper jellies, and you just want pectin stock, mm -hmm. you can save your cores and make a pectin stock with it. That's maybe getting into the weeds a little bit of jam, but like. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna like do something else with them, cool, save them. But like this is kind of a lot of apple to leave on there. Like I don't love doing that. I'd rather do this if we're gonna just dice them up. Or I make apple marmalade with a similar technique, and I will do this and then just like throw them through a food processor shredder, because it's like a shredded kind of product, and then macerate them like we did um, for the other apples. Um, but yeah, then you can just cut back like this. If you, and I think I said in the recipe you could do either. So you can throw them through your food processor to shred them or. Yes, cored and finely chopped or shredded. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. I had to go and like estimate. I was like, this is about 
you know, a, a pound of baking apples is about six medium, like, but that's where a scale is your Yeah, body. yeah, I mean, yeah. and so for these, it ended up being like four. I feel like each of these was about half, but they're They're a little bit big. bigger, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's also, you can kind of play around. This is a little bit too in the jazz zone of like, if you, while we're doing it, and we're gonna start it right now, those apples, right? Yeah, apples, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so then you'd, you would take this kind of um, about this fine, or again, shredded, and then macerate them. So toss them with the sugar and let them sit. Um, even up to overnight, I do that with some different jam. Um, I make a rhubarb jam that I um, toss. Oh. The rhubarb bourbon jam, do you yes, remember that? Yes, I do, that's really great. <laughs> yeah, that's another one that really depends on the rhubarb season for the for the year, I think like last year there wasn't a ton of rhubarb. Mm. Or maybe I was just too busy to make it. Might have happened. I made a little bit. I so just, how long have these been macerating? Um, about an hour and a half. Okay. So a little longer just because that's how the timing worked out when we got here. So they release some moisture. Um, if you ever want to show up to a dinner party with like a, a beautiful looking dessert, but you don't want to try very hard, quarter, like a quarter strawberries and throw maybe a quarter of a third of a cup of sugar on them and a little bit of lemon or lime juice and let them sit for an hour and then bring it to your dinner party and, I, and you'll be like, look at my beautiful strawberry topping. My grandma used to do that too. Like my grandma used to do the, the strawberries with a little bit of sugar and oh, it would just sit like during dinner and we'd yeah. just look at it. Yeah, oh. and it like becomes this beautiful sauce and it's, it's gorgeous. Go amazing, and there's yeah. like little jewels. Yeah, and then this is too, where these aren't actually giving up a lot of moisture. Maybe it's, uh, it might be just be that these apples are such good storage apples that they're not, or we could add a little bit more sugar to it and that would kind of leach out a little bit more. Um, but I'm gonna scoochie this guy off to the side. And we can start going because my backup plan for if these didn't have a lot of moisture was I brought some apple cider. So oh. we have a little extra apple cider. So if your apples don't, um, aren't releasing a lot of moisture. Because you want a little moisture in there to help make the yeah, to kind of make it, make it juicy. like a sauce. Or okay, so sure. like this, again, could be like apple pie filling or apple topping for pancakes. And so it's kind of like dealer's choice on like how you want to mm -hmm. present it. Um, so yeah, and like the, if you let them sit a little longer, I should have probably done this step before we started because to let it drain a little bit more. Um, then we would have that ready. But we just have a little bit of liquid, so I'm gonna add a little apple cider too to our so about how much is that? Like maybe an eighth cup? Uh, yeah, yeah, a couple tablespoons. And I think it'll give up a little bit more and we can add it in. Is there a particular apple variety you love working with or is it like five or six varieties which oh, as are available? Question about apple varieties. Yeah, so the, yeah, the question was if there's an apple variety I love working with. Um, I, uh, my favorite to eat is golden russets. Um, they are also the ugliest of ugly apples. They're really ugly apples. Um, because russet, like a potato that's russeted, mm -hmm. is dark. Um, and the first time I encountered them, I, I like overlooked them because also they were kind of wrinkly from Appleberry Farm <laughs> six years ago. Um, and I was like, what apples should I want to make applesauce with these? What should I use? And he's like, golden russets. And I had overlooked them completely. I was not interested in these apples. And I was like, all right, you said I should buy them. I'm going to buy them. And I didn't know if he was like, Yank and me, they were kind of wrinkly, like whatever, I trust you. And they were like the, the most delicious, like not mealy, like just fabulous, like crisp tasting. I don't know how to describe it. They have like this, they're like medium sweet maybe, and just have a great flavor. So those, I, and I, so I like working with them because I like eating them. Um, and you might have to bear with me for a minute because I am not used to induction. So we'll see how this goes. It works um, really fast. Yeah. Um, and then it stays hot, like, fairly quickly. Cool. Like, yeah. Good to know. Um, but then, here, well, I can do this next step, too, while that's happening. Um, we're just going to make a little slurry. And this was maybe different in my notes. Um, it, you probably don't need this much cornstarch. Cornstarch, uh, when I say slurry, is just a combination of cold liquid and cornstarch. And it, it works as a thickening agent um, really effectively. Very, very effective. So that's why I was like, ah, did I mean teaspoons and said tablespoons? Um, but I would just maybe have some on hand and add it slowly and see where you end up. And you can kind of use it for all sorts of stuff. 
Um, yeah, sauces, soup, different pie filling, things like this. I use it a lot for stir fries. Yes, yeah, so because it's, stir fries. Um, yeah. it sets clear. Like you end up with this opaque, or you start with this opaque kind of solution, and then once it activates with heat, it needs to boil. Uh, that's the other thing. If you try to throw it in something not boiling yet, it won't work. It's a thickening, yeah. Right. Thickening. It it can bind. Mm -hmm. If something. Oh yeah. The question was, um, will it work as a a binding agent? And it is a thickening agent. Um, yeah. If if like something's maybe starting to break, you can try to bring it back with a slurry. Yeah. That was question. Yeah. Yeah. So I have my little slurry here ready to go. Okay. This liquid is boiling. Um, I just kind of wanted to. So when I make this marmalade, I end up with a lot of liquid because for canning marmalade, you have a lot more sugar. Um, and so then I really cook down that liquid before I add my apples because I want to keep some structure to the apples. I don't want them to stew. So that's why I kind of do this process of letting them drain separately from the liquid. Because um, we're kind of, we're hoping for more like a poached apple. There we go. There's some more liquid rather than like a stewed apple. I want pieces and not sauce. So we want to keep some of this chunk in there. Um, so yeah. So we'll get this going here pretty quick. Um, other apples. Uh, it's really fun keeping track of the apple varieties through the season in Wisconsin because they change so drastically. The first apples come in in late July. Uh, the Lodi apples typically are the first ones, or what are the other ones? Liberty? No, or Liberties are early, but they're not the earliest. Um, Lodi's are typically the earliest, and, and they are tart, and they are very soft that, uh, skinned, so they don't hold very long, and they're really juicy. Like for making fruit leather, I have to, that's one that I have to pair with something else, because just on its own, it is too tart. Yeah, even when it um, gets all, but reduced down with the uh, dehydration and everything. All right. So then I tossed in the apples. And that liquid is going to come in. And um, while this is kind of happening, I might let this go. And then we can talk about onions. Yes, yay. Let's do that. You don't want to watch me just stir a thing forever. Um, <laughs> and this is how you stir. Yeah, and this is how you stir. I'm going to grab a different cutting board for onions just so I don't get onion on my donut board here. There we go. We'll try not to burn the apples. The amazing thing about induction is there's an apple piece sitting on there and it's not cooking. Ooh, hey. Isn't that Science. insane? I don't understand. It's magic. Magical. Science. All right. Science again. So. Onions cutting. Okay. Um, I kind of do maybe a different technique. A lot of, I feel like chefs do the leave the bottom on if you're going to dice. I've seen this, yeah. Yeah, this one is a little bit older. I was going to say, like. Some farm onions that are starting to sprout. It's like, like I he's, brought some he's been around. Yeah. He's been around the block. Um, oh, thank you. Do you use the onion ends for anything? Like, do you put them in stock? Or? I do. Okay. Yeah, we make soup. We make, like, weekly soup, uh, vegetarian or usually vegan. If I can help it, it's a vegan soup and, like, a meat-based soup. Um, we have a lot of soup eaters at the courthouse, so we make a lot of soup. Um, does, does the flavor of an onion diminish once it starts to sprout like that? Once the middle I would kind of say the opposite. I feel like it kind of gets more pungent. As an onion sprout, it get, sprouts, it gets oh, yes. more. Yeah. Yep, sorry. So there was a question about onion sprouting. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they get more pungent yeah. um, as they sprout. Um, and maybe a little bit sweeter. I've never done like a side-by-side -side comparison, but I feel like I heard that somewhere where it's like, because the sugars are starting to break down. Yeah. And so it might read as like a little sweeter. I don't know. Um, okay. Um, and then, so one thing to keep track of with onions is I feel like it's easy just to go, first of all, the claw. Is everyone cutting with yeah. the claw? Um, and then for onions, I like to go around lines of longitude, like if you pretend it's a planet, rather than just going straight down to start with. If you go straight down to start with, you end up with a giant piece that's like maybe twice the size that you want. This happens to me all the time, and I never thought yeah. about it. Yeah, if you start with lines <laughs> of, of longitude, 
you can slice down and then keep everything the same. Ah, uh, yeah. The yeah. hard part is when you get to kind of like back ending it, you can scooch over, flip it around, and go again from the front. So you're not like nice. trying okay. to ease against your thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a this question is from, sorry, a question from oh. Colette. She wants to know if you cook at your home and if your love of cooking has changed since you started doing it as a job. Oh, oh, great question. Um, so I started cooking from home in junior high. Um, I'm the youngest of two. Uh, my mom um, started working full time again. She worked part time when we were little um, and then full time again when I was like in junior high. So I was the first one home from school or from home at the end of the day. And she would leave me like super easy dinners, box dinner kind of stuff, frozen stuff to make. And I got bored quickly <laughs> and wanted to like spruce them up. And so I started asking like, hey, can you just leave raw chicken instead of like the frozen or like, can, you know, just kind of asked for more ingredients instead of just these like meal kit things. And, and it kind of started there. And I got my first job in high school. Um, that chef I worked for when I was in high school, when people would ask him, would say, does the mailman go for a walk when he gets done with work? Um, which, I mean, is no. <laughs> um, um, I don't think so. I mean, that was his answer, was like, no. Um, that being said, I, I, it's funny. I, I'll cook at home, I mean, frequently. I feel like we. Um, we end up cooking a lot at home. My husband also, he's not a uh, professional. Uh, he's watching too. Hey, babe. Um, <laughs> he uh, he enjoys cooking, so that's something we can kind of do together. So, like, he can take the lead if I'm, like, not feeling it. And then if it's, like, I just really, like, there's just a lot of veg to get through. It's like, okay, I'll just, let me just, I'll just do it. Um, and just, like, bust through a bunch of vegetables quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, has it changed? Probably, but uh, yeah, I feel like I've been doing it so long. I have had jobs in my past where like I didn't like the job and I didn't want to blame the cooking and so I would like force myself to cook at home to remind myself that I still liked the cooking. It was the job I didn't like because um, restaurant hours are long and can take over your life mm. if you're not careful. So yeah, like working in Chicago, you know, it was like coming home, like being miserable. It's like, no, 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 no. It's not the food's fault. It's, it's this situation I'm in. Right. So, yeah, I, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. All right. So Tyson has our onions and our bacon starting back there. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say a quick note about rendering bacon for this is it says to render it until crispy. Really let it render all the way. Like if you get impatient and throw other things in before it's done rendering, you won't get that opportunity back and you won't have unless you like soft bacon. Yep, this is kind of what we, so I'll just grab it, why not? So we get let it render oh, like, oh, it's dark. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is crispy. These are like bacon, crispy bacon bits. So low and slow, take your time, let it render. You can watch it go. I mean, you don't have to like leave it alone. I wouldn't recommend leaving it alone for too long. Um, and then you'll end up with, yeah, some really, not, really, really dark, nice looking yeah. bacon. And this is, um. Uh, a non-nitrate bacon we get from Stoddard's we use at the cafe that I really like. It does a nice job out there in Cottage Grove. Um, in with the other onions? I don't know. Oh yeah, there we go. Thank you. I was like, I was you knew. Put it there, you but knew. I was like, <laughs> you knew what I was thinking. Yes. Thank you. All right, our apples are bubbling. And kind of swing back over here. Do you do the chopped green cabbage in a? Um, Food processor, usually? Oh, um, we do it by hand, but okay. you could. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. I think if you're doing, I, I think it, you end up with a more even product if you, if you do it by hand, especially because like, we're not like, getting it super tiny. It's like, right. kind of chunks. So um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would do it by hand if you, if you really don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> okay. All right. And so these are translucent and like starting to break down, but they still have a little bit of a chunk. And also if you're doing apples, so again, these are like very late season apples, so they started out a little bit softer. I feel like we would have had a little bit more moisture. 
um, and they would maybe be holding together a little bit better if they were a little bit earlier. But like that kind of translucency is what we're going for. And if this. you're getting something like you know Granny Smith from the from the grocery store, mm. it's you're just going to be keeping an eye on like how much liquid you have and how quickly they're breaking down. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and well, once that's they're kind thinking, of yeah. yeah, once they're kind of starting to get translucent, then you're you're good to go because they'll keep cooking. So these are maybe there's still some pieces that maybe aren't translucent, but like as we finish this, they will cook through and it will be yummy. Okay. Sure. Is there any variety in cakes? Is there a variety? I hate Granny, Granny Smith. Oh, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Do you guys hate Granny Smith? They're very mealy. I they I guess they can be. Actually, no, I think it's part of seeking golden delicious. Oh, okay, yes. I, I feel I like, yeah. Yeah, I feel like anything that's called delicious is trying too hard. <laughs> as maybe, you know, kind of telling on itself. Um, okay. I am going to turn this down. Um, Because actually, I'm just going to get a little bit of water. It's like a little bit dry. Lauren. No, you're good. <laughs> it's going to add a little bit of water. Or if we had more apple cider hanging around, we could have added a little bit of that. But, um, and then this is our salt and our cinnamon. And you're using kosher salt? Yes. Are you a Malden person or a diamond crystal person? I am a diamond. So am I, Team Diamond Crystal. Yeah, is any, is anyone a Morton? No, I is mean, so, no, well, no, but like, Morton is more available. Um, oh, sure. Morton Crystals, I feel like are too big. Things get too salty pretty quickly Yeah, for me. That's what, yeah. they just seem like they're too big. Diamond Crystal gives you a little bit of leeway. So, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of this slurry to start with, because again, like, we're pretty. So the corn starts slurry to thicken yes. it up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Again, because we don't have a ton of extra liquid. If you have more liquid, then you can do more slurry. Oops, am I sliding you around too much? Sorry, little pot. I think you turned it up because it went over the bowl. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna <laughs> add just a little bit more. Again, you can always, it's harder to take away. You can, if you realize you add too much, add some more liquid, and then it will balance back out again. But. Is this going to be more liquidy, less liquidy than an apple pie filling, or about the this? Same? I would recommend it being less liquidy than an apple pie filling. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, so apple pie filling versus punchki filling, um, less liquidy, because when you cut them and put it in there, it tends to want to settle out. Like especially like if I do like a raspberry jam or like a, I did like raspberry red currant, so I tried to make it like. I, I made a jelly, but I tried to make it really thick. Um, lots of, and currants are great. They build tons of pectin. I got a bunch of, there was a great year for currants too for yes. local farmers. I still have a bunch frozen. Um, so this is, this is one, so an apple pie filling could be a little bit looser. Yes. Than this would be, this is gonna be a little bit like thicker, tighter, drier, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Add just a little bit more and then, oh my gosh. And then we're gonna make the fastest pastry cream in the whole world. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to roll some dough. And then we have other pastry cream, so we can start eating. Uh, that was the vanilla. So this is like basically done. It's where I want it, but I'm going to toss in my vanilla and my butter just to kind of fold in at the end. Oh, that's really great. Right. And then you get the cinnamon and the butter and the vanilla. So if you're if you decide that you want to make this but you don't want to make all the donut part, um, what like what what could you do with it that is not putting it inside of a donut? Well, if you kept it a little looser, you put it in a pie, or um, I mean this would be a rad pancake or waffle topping. Yeah, it would. <laughs> French toast. Um, yeah, vanilla, vanilla ice, ice cream. cream. Yeah, vanilla now we're talking. Cream. That's the move. <laughs> now we're talking, and then you could keep it warm for that. All right. And then, so the butter is melted, so this is going to get turned off. And then we will set it aside. I don't know where Lauren went again. Lauren. Maybe Tyson can do it. I was just going to spread it out to get more surface area to get it to cool down. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna scooch you this. We'll roll some dough. All right. And again, I wasn't looking at my notes. Here is your dough. Yeah. So this is our finished dough. Um, not the one we made. So for you guys at home, we had the magic of television this. So this is one I started at about four, I started making it at 4.45, it was totally finished a little after five. Um, and then we turned it, uh, gosh, a little before six. And then now, yeah, so perfect. About 45 minutes to an hour. It's like, if I give it a little shaky, it's kind of like jello-y. Um, the first time when we were playing around with it this, se this season, punchki season, and um, we were testing things, we both of us, Tyson and I, he was a little bit more, um, he didn't think it would work. <laughs> uh, we were both a little bit disappointed. We were like, oh, it looks like it's overproofed. It looks like it's too wet. Let's whatever. Um, and then it ended up being super delicious. Because so, so you baked it off anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we've, I mean, at this point, it's like, why not throw it in the fryer? Yeah. I guess that's the difference, too, with, like, donuts that you can fry, because you find out quick. It's not like you have to, like, do another thing and then put it in the oven for an hour and then wait and then see. It's like, let's throw some in the fryer and see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. so we did, and they were great. <laughs> that was always my challenge with, with bread. You know, John here makes a lot of bread. Um, and one of my big challenges was, like, I can wreck it at the end. So yeah. like I can have done all of the rising and all of the shaping and all of the stuff and I can still wreck oh, it at the end. No, <laughs> and like yeah. that's just really disappointing. It is. So Yeah. All right. So I am but the starter I'm, that you gave me right before the pandemic really came in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so I am flowering this a fair bit, but I'm not I'm like not trying to work it anymore. I'm just kind of letting it be. Um but I want it on a very floured board because, again, still pretty it's wet. It's going to stick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to want to stick still a little bit. Is um, it going to feel different from a normal donut dough at this point? Or is it going to feel different from a normal donut dough? I'm just repeating for them. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like wetter. Um, yeah. I feel like it's like um, there, and you, you, so there's, I don't know how much you can see, there's like already like very big bubbles in it and I'm not trying to kill them. Like it's okay if you squish them a little bit, they'll come back, there's lots of bubbles. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very wet, it's a pretty wet dough. But then it's also like super easy to roll. It's a little bit easy to roll too thin, something that I've noticed. Um, About how thick are you looking for right now? Like half an inch, like half an inch, maybe a little bit, the, Thinner. I mean, and it's again, it's kind of dealer's choice. If you want big ones, you can kind of go you don't for it. Like you're putting any no, on. I'm yeah. like that. My dowel is like yeah. hefty enough where I'm just like letting it go. So yeah, it's like maybe about like from here to the end of my finger. So like yeah, like is that like half an inch? This much, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Universal. It's a very gentle version of a donut mix. Most donut mixes are like pretty. Pretty brutal, you know, and yeah. I wouldn't even call it different than baking. This is more like artisan baking in that you're not trying to degas, you're trying to keep it, the structure intact. There's yeah. A, there's overnight fermentation. Like so just so that folks at home can hear that, um, this is a little bit different than a typical donut dough because you want to be a little bit gentler with it. You want to, you want to sort of protect what you've built with that long ferment. Um, by not like letting all the bubbles out of it. So you want to be kind of more gentle with it than you would with a typical more commercial donut dough. Yeah, yeah, and we're cutting, this is a little bit smaller than three inches. It's like, a, we did them a little bit smaller this year um, just to kind of see how they turn out. It, again, dealer's choice. If you want giant ones, go for it. Um, I didn't want to be like, you a need a donut. two and seven eighths inches cutter for the, the, the like I just, uh, you do what you want. <laughs> You're not going to wreck them by making them a little bit bigger. Um, oh, yeah, the bubbles. I see the yeah, bubbles coming Yeah, back. you see the bubbles. Yes. They're there already. And then even like, so we would, the ones that you guys in front are going to try, at this point, we took them and we put them in the refrigerator overnight and then let them come back up to temperature. Ta da! These are maybe, no, and these are the same cutter, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so they like poofed a lot. 
These ones are a little a little taller. A little still, taller, they, but yeah. They, they, they yeah, they, they come stuff. up a lot. And then these set out since we got here so that they could come up to room temperature again, which is helpful. They're actually two days. Oh, these are the two days? Yeah, this is a two day perfect. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, so we were trying out different things too. So like, so this is after two days and then these are the one days. Oh no, these are the two days. These ones are the two, these are the one days. Got it, okay. Yeah, sorry, so these are the two. So like, they kept their, but I rolled these a little bit smaller. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit skinnier. Um, and then the only other thing I do is like, if they, if they start like they're poofing a lot, I kind of just give them a little pull. Like you don't want to like flatten them because then you'll lose that big bubble in the middle. But um, I'm trying to find a good example. Sometimes when I roll them, they end up a little bit egg shaped because I don't like to twist cutters. I just kind of scooch it, um, which is like a carryover from making biscuits. If you like twist biscuits, they don't come up as much. It's, a, it's like a cutout cookie too. Like yeah. you just want to go. Yeah, you go like just like a wiggle. Otherwise, you're gonna lose the, the shape of yeah. your Christmas thing. You know? Yeah. And so then, if if you end up with one kind of egg shaped, you just kind of like stretch it out a little bit. Just like give it a pull, and I feel like that gives the bubble space to uh, give to the do its thing. Bubble space. I love it. Yeah. You need sometimes like space there. Space for the bubble. <laughs> bubble space. You need just some space. The bubbles need some space. Sometimes. Um, great. So you're letting these ferment after. Yep. You cut them. And that was another thing in past years we played around with like, can I set the dough aside and then let it come up and then roll it out? And it's like, no, kind of kills it. Um, but if you can cut them and set them aside, come in the morning. So you want your donuts in the morning. If you do this process the night before, get them in the fridge, bring them out in the morning, warm up your oil while these are coming up to temperature. If you already have your fillings done, fry up fresh punchki, and now you have a delicious weekend treat that didn't take you half the day to make. And it's low pressure. Again, time is your friend. Um, and that's why we were playing around with the two-day ones, because it's like, how, how far can we go with this? And there were some cool like sourdough things happening. Uh, also, you can re-roll this dough, and I recommend it to get maximum donutage. Oh. So yeah, so I, I would move all these, and they would go on a pan, and then you can take all of this and re-roll it. And the same way, just try to be gentle with it and try to like shake out any extra flour. Um, one thing that happens is that they're not totally as nice on top. Like you might get kind of weird breaks in them, but they're still tasty. You can still fill them. So nice. All right. Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, like I can't. I can't. There's so much dough left. I couldn't throw that away. It's I. I bake off the half a cookie that's left after we're done with the cookies. <laughs> I like scrape, and I was like, no, it's a little treat for me, because um, I'm a crazy person like that. I can't waste things. All right. All right. This we're going to light the world's fast. fastest. Oh, my God. The world's fastest. Pastry cream. The world's fastest pastry cream. Um, I don't want to do that yet. Nope. Go away. Um, pastry cream tray. This? this? Oh, really that's actually going like in the donut. piece of donut. Oh, my God. The world's fastest. Just like a little piece. I keep looking over here. I was going to say, you can put it there. <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right. For the world's fastest. Oh my gosh, it's good. Okay. Do it up. The donuts are so good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. More cornstarch. Lots of cornstarch this time. I'm going to scooch. Thank you. Um, cornstarch and the sugar go in the bottom and get mixed together with the salt. So we have all the dry. Um, and you want to whisk them. Um, we uh, sifted the cornstarch just to make sure there weren't any lumps. But like mixing it with the sugar here kind of helps. Um, it makes it less of a pain to just have it mixed. And start that in the bottom. And then we're going to add. <laughs> Danger. Okay, there we go. Our milk and our cream. <laughs> That's good. And normally I would scrape these, but time crunch. Um, milk and cream go in, and then you make sure that all of that dry stuff in the bottom gets incorporated. So I'm really kind of pushing into the edges of the pan, making sure there's no little pockets. Can you pass me one more spatula? Yes. Thank you. Um, I have a whisk that does this. 
that goes Ooh, out, and it's hey, real great for that. Yeah. Instead yeah. of the, like this more balloony style, yeah. it like it's just like has little balls on the end of it. Awesome. <laughs> I am sure they have it here at Kesnex. <laughs> it's like the kind yeah, of thing that they would have. do. Yeah. Yeah. Might be good for that. Yeah. <laughs> great. And then our yolks. Just make sure those go in. So the yolks that we separated earlier. Yes. Well, these are, we threw those ones in the donuts. These are oh. other. So you end up with a bunch of whites if you're doing these two together. Um, yeah. Or, you know, enjoy an egg white omelet. We did get a suggestion to save the whites for whiskey sours. Let's say whiskey sours. Or whiskey sours, sours. Yes. 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 That's why, how did yes. I forget? I'll like, bring, I bring one home occasionally. Yeah. A Ramos gin fizz if you have uh, someone who really loves you. Um, we also did a scraped vanilla bean. We, we pre-scraped it, because I think that's something that hopefully people know, the bean scrape. Um, sometimes they are really affordable at Costco. Vanilla like, beans. They use like the back of a knife usually to yeah. scrape. Mm -hmm. but I don't know what you... Oh no, that's what I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like paring knife, cut them down the straight cut as the best you can down the middle. Sometimes it's hard to find a, a middle to cut down. Um, yeah, and then just back of the knife, scrape it. Yeah, I used to think that vanilla beans would be really hard to find, but I found them at Jenny Street Market, even. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I got a whole bunch at Costco. Yeah. Like, for not as much as I thought they would be. So Sometimes I like, if I have a little, little extra or you don't know what to do with it, I would just put it in sugar and I make vanilla sugar. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and then we had um, zest on there, which you could do, too, with a microplane. I also just like to do, like, a peeler and get some of that orange goodness in there. And then we're going to strain it out again. Um, Lauren keeps. Lauren, could I have your could I have your fine mesh strainer, please? Thank you. In like a container. Fine mesh strainer. Fine mesh strainer. And Sorry, we talked about it yesterday, but I did not grab it. All right, we're going to crank her here. So this is our milk, cream, yolks, cornstarch, sugar, and salt with the vanilla bean and the orange zest. And then the only thing we're waiting on is more vanilla extract. Um, this is orange liqueur and orange blossom water, which it's kind of, if you want to just do liqueur, this was like, hey, thank you. Ooh, this guy. And then like a thingy. Oh, you mean you want to strain it in the Yeah. <laughs> thank you, friend. Um, <laughs> So using that much of the orange peel, would there include a little bit of bitterness as well from the orange on there? So the question peel. was, like, orange peel might add some bitterness to it. Um, it's Instead so... Just oh, sure. Um, thank you. Um, I haven't super noticed that. Like, this peeler maybe took off a little bit more of the pith than my other peeler. Um, but also, like, it's so rich. Like, a little bitter is not, you know, maybe the worst thing. Maybe that's why I lean into it this way. So yeah, maybe, I, I mean, I, again, it would kind of be dealer's choice. Um, if you don't want the zest bits in it and you don't have like a super fine mesh strainer like this, I would recommend doing it this way because then it's easier to get out. Um, but if you want zest bits in it, then sure. Fair enough. I mean, like the beans are gonna go, the vanilla beans are gonna go through here regardless. And that's, we wanna hang on to those. I found orange blossom water at Steve's on University, but if you can't find it, you can use only orange liqueur. That was one thing that you oh, mentioned. Yes. yes. Yeah, and then that's kind of like whatever orange liqueur you want. This one was called like Grom, not Grand Cru. That's in my head for something else. But it was like um, a not Grand Marnier, but like a similar, or Cointreau, triple sec. Um, I haven't played around too much with this recipe and it, but I bet like, Bourbon would be nice in there if you want to like up the vanilla a little bit. Like, it's it's a uh, it's jazz. You know, you can kind of <laughs> stick to the form. You know the head. If if you're a musician, the head is like the the melody. If you know that and you know the changes, you can work with in there and improvise. And I feel like that's a way that this this is appropriate for this. If you don't like orange and vanilla, skip the orange and just do all the vanilla. Um, So yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun and versatile. And then we're gonna put some butter in at the end too. So we have our liqueur and our vanilla, more vanilla, um, and some butter. 
and that's going to be. You're whisking it a lot. And is that because that the eggs, so the eggs don't curdle or eggs don't like cook and get weird? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you will see. Get weird. This is science yeah. term. <laughs> it is a science term, I think. Um, <laughs> the universe is weird, I think, officially. So I think that counts. Um, and we're actually close. So you see the steam, the steam coming up as our first indication. I'm also going to very quickly just make sure because this is a whisk that doesn't go into the corners for me. Oh yeah, there's some stuff happening. Um, so it will go from liquid to solid, essentially, very quick, as soon as the cornstarch, as soon as it comes to a boil. And the cornstarch activates, I feel like, moments before the yolks would curdle. So that's why you have to like, Ooh, that, yeah, because cool. it's like, this is the thing like I really wanted to show, but we had to make sure nothing else was happening while I was doing this so that I didn't have to move. Oh yeah. So yeah. There it is. So all of a sudden. Yep. I'm sorry, you guys can't see. Hopefully people at home can see. I'm gonna turn this off and even see a little bit. Yeah. And this, like, because I don't know this burner, I really wanted to make sure it didn't go too far. It could maybe go for like another four or five seconds just to make sure. But like once that window. activates, yeah, <laughs> right. Once it activates, it goes very quick, and you stir it very quick, and then you are done. And then it's easiest to strain um, when it's hot like this. So we're going to do that. Um, ladle? A little ladle? A little one. A little one. A little ladle. Um, yeah, once it gets cool, it's a lot harder to strain, so you want to just do it quickly. But again, once it's done, Oh, that's fine. I'll make it work. Thank you. I don't want to burn up your uh, pretty wooden cutting board over here. Oh, the cutest. The Thank cutest you. Ladle the the cutest, cutest ladle. ladle. Not the big. So the reason I'm using a ladle, especially for something. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, guys, guys. <gasps> Is this still the magic of television? It's a magic. 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 It'll go in. Don't do that here. Do that. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. So at home, you want to throw those things in before you start to strain it. Uh, what I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> in real life. Yeah. But hey, when I was doing one of my practice ones this week, I almost left out the egg yolks. So I was proud of myself to not do that. It's, it's been reassuring as a home cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of, well, I feel like there's a lot you can keep in your brain. There's a lot I can keep in my brain. Um, but then you reach a point sometimes where it's just like stuff falls out again. And um, The reason I'm using a ladle, especially with this shape triangle, is that it is the best, most effective way of like passing something thick like this. Mm. Um, it goes real fast where like you can, you can use, if you have more of a bowl shaped, you can use a spatula. Thank you. Um, and it, that's effective, but for this. Say. Yeah, I, my mine is more of a rounded, and a spatula works really well. Yeah, for that. yeah. yeah. Um, also, this is like one of the things that I get irritated while doing. Like, oh yeah. It's like, <sighs> I've done it with like pate before. Like, make like chicken oh, liver. Pate. I adore no. chicken liver pate. Yeah. But like this part, you do that in like a bowl guy, or do you have a flat? I just ham? like push it. I just push it through it like the the strainer that's circular. Oh, that, oh. oh okay. So again, <laughs> I would say that use your bench scraper. And oh, if you have yeah. like a TAM, that, yeah. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I don't think I own a, a million tam. and one uses for a bench scraper. You use them, everything, yeah. Yeah, shit, right? The, the bench, bench scraper cookbook. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be everything. Just be, <laughs> no, that's not true. Even though I had a job where we would walk around with them like in our chef jacket pockets. Oh, I love that. Because then, like, um, we had like a goat cheese salad that had to go in the microwave for like 30, it was like this little goat cheese puck that was breaded, that had to go in the microwave for like 30 seconds. And so we just pop it on our little cart. We'd pull it out and pop it on and put it in. And it's just like, so cute. A million and one uses. Great. So this, because we added that stuff kind of last minute, I'm just going to stir it in. And then um, it will form a skin. So you want to put plastic wrap over it. Like right on top of it. Yes, like, like, like press real, it real. down. If you forget to do that and it forms a skin anyway. Hmm. It's like, can you just like remove it somehow? You can, like, yeah, you can try. I mean, it kind of depends on what you're using it for. Like, if it doesn't, 
matter to you particularly? You can just, just eat deal, it. Yeah. You can <laughs> okay. kind of like scrape it off and eat it okay. or like mix it in and deal with it being okay. a little lumpy or. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, that's one step. Okay, so I also, at that same French restaurant, we would take a, a pound of butter and rub that over pastry cream Whoa. to get it, to, to have that set it instead of plastic wrap. Whoa. Yeah. I know. Oh, okay. It was uh, like cold butter and you put it over the top, but then you ended up, like, you had to be careful not to end up with butter pieces. But it <laughs> worked. That's how we did it. And so I was like, all right. All right. That was, like, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. So, yeah. If we. Okay. We've got our pastry way. cream. Great. So you let this cool all the way probably before you want to fill your donuts with it. Um, and then we're going to do that. We're going to fill some donuts. Yay. And we have them Ooh. here. Because Tyson, magic of television. Ta da! Okay. Um, what kind of oil are you fry frying in? Canola. Canola. Canola frying oil. Thank you. And then um, one thing that happens too is you get this kind of pale line. They're so airy and floaty that they do not g get all the way, and that's okay. They can have a little line across, and then you just use that to cut. So you can just use that as your little marker if you're going to put the apple filling or whatever. Um, and then you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, this is like super open. Like just so, it's like one big bubble. So it's also really easy, I mean, depending on what filling you're doing, it's super easy to overfill these. Like okay. my, my high school intern was helping us do some and we had like a super rich um, apricot plum filling that was like, like super thick jam. Like you wouldn't necessarily want three tablespoons of it in your mouth at once. <laughs> and he was feeling, I was like, I need three dozen. How many do you have so far? He's like, I'm almost out. And I was like, how many do you have? He's like, eight. He's like, no, no, it's too much. So we had to, we had to fix it. Um, but it's possible. Um, I'd say especially for the apple and the savory ones, this is like, you want this huge open space because that's what we're doing. All right. So you've got the oil heated like a two to three inches, like-ish? Yeah, that's probably that's all you need. They float like almost immediately, and then they they are very very buoyant. You can see um, kind of back here. I, I want. Yeah, I don't like, know if you can totally see. Can you guys see? Oh, back of one that's not cooperating. Yeah, let's just tip the pot of oil. It's just really up. really puffy. Yeah, and sometimes they'll get like kind of. Requires a little bit of help. Is he flipping yeah. those or how does yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they. Donut sticks. Oh, oh. oh yeah, we got we have donut sticks that we play with with the donut robot. It's fun. <laughs> um, they um, sometimes will get kind of too big of a bubble and they won't want to stay on the one side and you can kind of give it a little puncture okay. with like a, like a toothpick or something but like if you do it near the middle that's kind of best because then they'll sink back and not fill with oil. It's easy for them to kind of like fill that hole and get kind of greasy. So yeah, so if it's like near the kind of middle part then they'll kind of even back out again. How much time does it take? Yeah, how much time does it take how, total? Yeah, how long? Um, um, I'd say at 375, it takes about three to three minutes on one side and about one and a half to two on the other. Okay. Did you guys get that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so three minutes on one side, one and a half on the other. Uh, yeah. Keep in mind, we used um, the robot before. So yeah, kind of we were, we're like, we have to do like a rondo yeah. with oil because what people have at home, I mean, if you have like a fryer at home, you can set it to 375 and that's easy. But yeah, like you pretty medium to dark brown. I mean, like this. I don't. This is not too dark. Like you know, and then especially on the one side, having like a firmer base. If you're going to fill them, like that helps kind of hold things in so they don't get soggy or mushy. Yeah. Does the popcorn test work for the oil frying? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I just. Do you mean like throw something in it goes pop? No. Well, yeah. Oh. So like I, I put a kernel in of popcorn. Oh gosh, a kernel I've never of popcorn. Done this. I have no and then I have I have a candy thermometer like this, you know, where it attaches to the side of your thing. I and I put a little kernel of popcorn in. And when the popcorn pops, my oil is ready. I have never ever tried popcorn. that. <laughs> Do we have a popcorn kernel? Oh like, yeah. No. <laughs> so we should just, we should try it at the kitchen. I'm excited it's like to a, this. Yeah, it's like a little cue that tells you, okay, you can start frying. Yeah, it's just, fun. Especially on an electric stove, which I unfortunately mm. have an electric stove. It could take a long time for that much oil to get hot. So, yeah, I'm also like very interested in like what you do when you're done with the frying oil, like, because you're a no waste kind of person too, like. Right, yeah, so yeah. we, I mean, we I struggle with that. use it, of course, until yeah. we're done. It's like, yeah, it's hard at home with what to do with the oil. Yeah. Um, you want to, 
if you fry occasionally, you want to try to get it back into a container and seal it up. Mm -hmm. um, and strain it because, if you can. Or yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, oh, coffee, coffee filter. filters are great for straining oil at home. That's you definitely you don't want air on it. Air will make oil go bad. Yes, right, um, right. Yeah, oxygen is not the friend of oil. Yeah. All right. Um, so we have our beautiful yeah. donuts. We're like yeah, yeah. So we are gonna. Um, so they look like fried biscuits. I love it. <laughs> I like to just use a little paring knife and give them just a little. I don't know, maybe like inch, inch and a half open, and then you can kind of like wiggle it around. Um, for doing any of the fillings that are like chunkier, which I feel like a lot of them are. Um, and then you can kind of like pop the sides and it'll kind of like <laughs> be a little puppet maybe? I don't know, this is, I've never tried to talk to a punchki. That's not true, I talked to a punchki, what am I talking about? Um, it seems like but you would have. Definitely, it's more of like the, come on you guys, please. Um, Do you like talk back? Um, no comment. Sometimes, no. Um, so yeah, we can get our filling. Oh, you guys didn't get to see the bacon filling when it was finished. Finished bacon filling? Yep. Oh, I just wanted to show. Yep, right here. Okay. Yeah, so it's like our caramely onions and our the bacon. There, <laughs> it has a Waft wonderful it. smell. It smells oh. like Thanksgiving in my house. Oh, good. Yeah. Hold, hold it still for just one second. And then Very Polish. Polish cabbage. Yeah. Kapusa. Yeah. yeah. Kapusta. 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 Sorry, it's like not, it's actually not part of my Polish tradition. Oh, all right. But it's part of Tyson's. And they're like, well, let's, let's do, it. do it up with the Polish stuff. So. The Slovaks also love the cabbage. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like, <laughs> cabbage is kind of great. I don't know. I feel like it gets a bad rap. Yeah. Um, a great way to hang on to your pastry cream once you're done is to get it, we just wrapped it in um, plastic wrap. So we just took a big sheet of plastic wrap and put, well, maybe this is a cup and a half or so in there wrapped it up and kind of like wound it so it make like a little sausage. Um, bullet, sure. I think it looks like a sausage, fine. Okay, whatever. If you don't have this kind of piping tip thing, can you use a spoon? Like, are there Definitely. other ways? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so you can use a spoon with any of these. If you don't wanna screw around with pastry bags, um, I wouldn't necessarily try to do the like, fake a pastry bag with like a freezer bag. Sometimes you can do that. I think this is gonna be too thick and you'll yeah, just I was pop like, the sides like and it would it'll be, a be mess. frustrating. Yes. yes. Um, so yeah, definitely, you can just like take it with a spoon and get it in there, no problem. Um, but, oh, so this, so we just like knotted the ends of this and then you just cut the knot. Yep. And then now you have a little bit of like a, and then when you need more, you can just pop out the bag and put in a new one and it's like much less messy than trying to like fill it and it's falling and it's just kind of a disaster. Oh, um, oh, oh, that's the only thing you have to watch out for is that one before you have the pressure on it. There you go. There you go. And then you just fill them up like that. <laughs> um, and then, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help myself. We had some fun toppings too that I know we're over time. Oh my gosh. Um, but I wanted to talk about toppings. So um, traditionally, and we usually just do powdered sugar on top of all of the sweet ones. Um, and then we're kind of playing around with some fun stuff. Let me see. Yeah, so there's a product called tapioca maltodextrin that a friend of ours was playing around and it's like a little bit like micro gastronomic blah, blah, blah. Like I, I used it a million years ago to make a uh, uh, pecan powder. Oh, okay. Um, I know. And uh, so he was playing around with it and made a bacon powder. And we're like, can we really get some of the bacon powder to try? It would be like a really great topping. So bacon powder. Um, you take bacon fat, essentially, and mix it with tapioca multidextrin. And um, I'm not sure the ratios. We didn't really have time to get there. But um, it makes a powder. I feel like you need a lot. I remember from my pecan days. And then I said at the beginning, I've gotten more fun tools for playing with stuff from the dehydrator, I got a freeze dryer. One thing you do with freeze dryers is make things like freeze dried apples. Yeah. That then you can make into apple powder. Oh, fun. That my friend Christine A. May, who makes slide potato chips, made apple cinnamon potato chips in the fall oh, with nice. my apples. And for this, we made apple cinnamon powder for topping the apple punchki. That's so, so fun. So you guys get to try. Um, yeah, so we have some like fun, different, cool toppings too. So nice. that's something that we're hoping hoping to work on in future too, to like 
uh, apple powder too. I was thinking with the fruit leather, it's like yeah. um, you know a thing that can top or thing do different things with. So it's been really fun playing with the freeze dryer and coming up with. Fun Let's products do like a little trio of them, yeah. and then we can like show folks what they're all gonna look like. Yeah. So here is the powdered sugar. And then I think the apples are over there, maybe. Were they over there? Thank you. Thank you, Beck. Um, and then I just. Oh. I need the apples. Oh, great. Um, I just need a couple spoons. Do I like some spoons? A couple now? spoons. Uh... Oh, Lauren. I'm just going to go ahead and keep shouting at Lauren for stuff. Okay. <laughs> no, we found it again. I'm sorry. Is there a plate we can do like a little demo of them? Yeah. So this is just the regular powdered sugar. And you would do like a whole tray of those, right? Like yeah. if you did a bunch. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the apple powder. Oh, thank you. Is that hot? It's not hot. It doesn't say that it's hot anymore. Nah, we're OK. We'll find out. I don't understand. That's amazing. Um. I mean, I, I basically do. I'm, I'm just going to do this one with a spoon. It's I fine. <laughs> mirp, mirp. The bacon? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's right here. The bacon is wafting. Wafted bacon. All right. I'm just going to grab some of this apple. Um. And it's just a couple, it's like a couple tablespoons. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't need to be, I feel like, again, sometimes the bubbles, you're, the impulse is to make it full, and you kind of got to think about what you actually want to consume in a bite. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little bit of our, oops, I'll do this guy over here to keep our plate kind of clean, a little apple powder. So yeah, it's apples and cinnamon and a little bit of powdered sugar just to make sure, because apple powder on its own um, is very touchy moisture-wise. Uh, so if it gets, that was one of the things I had to work out with Christine, was yeah. like how to, when it was still humid in the fall, um, make that work. And our bacon. This is the savory ones. This is one the of the ones that you did savory. this year. Yes. Uh, how did they sell? Did the people, were people into them? Um, they sold them right. People, I think, were a little bit confused <laughs> by them. Um, but no, it was, I mean, they, they were so delicious. Um, I just put this over here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it smells wonderful. Yeah. 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 We have some adventurous customers, luckily. But yeah. The feedback was very positive. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, positive. right. You can go yeah. wrong with bacon. Right. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we have some adventurous customers and, um, we have some like real punchy enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. um, like I think your friend is one of yes, them. Yes, my friend like, Kyle, really our friend Kyle. Yeah, oh is, yeah. Is kind of obsessed Which with I punchki. think he reached out to me like two weeks, a week or two before <laughs> I right. like announced. He's like, are you doing it this year? And I was like, yes, I am. Signal. Yeah, he does. It's, it's right. great. And then this is our Ideally, bacon powder. Ideally, I'm going to bring him some after this. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I want to drop some of He got house. to try it. He was one of the ones who bought one. He got a bacon yeah, he, one. He, he got all of them. Yeah, and so that's our bacon powder on top. <gasps> oh wow! So that's those are the ones that we're doing today. All right. These are Yay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> and then. Sorry, what was that? What topping did you? The bacon. Oh, so this was the uh, what topping was on the savory one? Yeah. Is the um the bacon powder that was made? So it's um essentially bacon fat and tapioca maltodextrin, which is a, a compound that kind of makes fats into solids. Yeah. Okay. I think. Um, or powders. Sure. Okay. So, yeah. Well, hey, these are beautiful. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. this wonderful demo. Yeah. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Amazing. Thank you for having yeah, us. We're going to eat We went over time donuts. a little bit. I hope it's okay. Right. Great. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Before Thank we close everybody. out, we have some people want to know, do you only sell them at Mardi Gras or is there a chance for people to <laughs> still get them? So, uh, they are on my catering menu right now. Mm. So, if you want to buy them by the dozen, um, they are, they are, they are there. Um, we might, I mean, we ran them this week in the cafe because like we were practicing for this all week. <laughs> um, but 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like if there, if it seems like there is demand, there is a good chance that we can. Yes, there's a good chance that we could do more. I don't know if it's like sacrilege. In Poland, we've got them year round. <gasps> See, fair enough. Who I've knows? never been to Poland. My mom never told me. <laughs> <laughs> like once a year, that's it. No, All right. no not in Poland. She never yeah. That. Okay, yeah. I think the okay, takeaway great, is so. you need to go to Ugly Apple and be like, please give us punch key. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that we've like really kind of gotten some of this timing stuff a lot better this year, like realize like the overnight and like I, that makes it a lot more approachable. That's like, yeah, I'm not saying no, it's possible. OK. Yeah. Yeah. OK, great. Thank you so much to everyone Thank who joined us both in person and to people so. watching <laughs> online. If you want to be here in person next time, become a Cap Times member at membership.captimes.com. And we want to give another thank you to our sponsors, Kesnick's, our kitchen sponsor, for hosting us here. And then Leopold's, our wine pairing sponsor, who gave us this beautiful wine that our guests are now going to, going to enjoy with the punch key. I think our winner tonight is going to be Colette. So Colette, you won a bottle of this wine. You can pick that up at Leopold's anytime. And even if you didn't win, you can go get this wine at Leopold's. Uh, thank you one more time to our chef, Laura Burleson, for making this wonderful dish. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Yeah. <laughs>